This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Interesting sounding place to stay for the night and convenient. Right next to the marina at Oban on the southwest coast of Scotland. From here, boats set off to some of the most remote parts of Scotland where the weather and the sea can be a big challenge. That will be the case for this particular vessel about to leave for a 10 day trip to a very isolated island out in the Atlantic. They may or may not make it on this sea adventure with St Hilda to St Kilda. Before the group of hopeful ecotourists embark, a quick look around the marina hints at what they might see, weather and ocean permitting. A species of seahorse perhaps. Or some kind of seal, grey or common. They're inquisitive, so they'll come to check out the St Hilda boat and its equally nosy passengers. They'll certainly enjoy fulmers, which increased greatly in the past, but are now suffering from that dreaded plastic in the ocean, as we'll see. Who's chasing who? This can happen, especially on the outer coast of the Outer Hebrides, when Atlantic rollers hit the rocks and St Kilda's in the way. The ocean may look big and powerful, but life depends on millions of tiny creatures in the plankton. When we're gone from the oceans, we'll be taking you all with us. Up the food chain to the tuna, the Porsche of the sea, the bluefin almost overfished to extinction. We are top of the food chain, plankton at the bottom. Believe it or not, that's where the world's second biggest fish after the whale shark, the basking shark feeds, sieving microscopic plankton, becoming quite a tourist attraction. But will our eco-tourists be successful with St Hilda to the far-flung target of distant St Kilda? Now then, let's meet the crew of this so-called adventure. But will it be from Morag, catering for a group of strangers who may find her offerings <laughs> repeating themselves? So the weather can go from flat calm to very rough very quickly as we'll see. She'll need a lot of imagination with the food and drink. Leo and his skipper Charlie are checking in the customers who have paid a not inconsiderable sum for a fairly unknown experience. So these two have quite a responsibility to deliver a basking shark, lots of puffins and the real gamble St Kilda itself. A visit of a lifetime. Peter Garson, the guide, will be hoping for the best of luck with the wildlife, the weather and the sea. And that's quite a daunting combination. It's time for a tour. The saloon. Um, there are three ways in and out. The main corridor you've, you've come through, the steps up here which take you out onto the boat deck and behind yourself. Home for here, ten days, a bit like one of those reality TV shows. <laughs> any cockroaches? Well no, it could be more serious than that. And then pass that round behind you. This might help too, an honesty box. But all the passengers' fate is in the hands of these two, Charlie and Leo. <laughs> 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 
and catering wise yeah, Morrow. Through quarters, mm -hmm. through yes. hanging out space. So if you're wondering where we are, <laughs> we might be in here. Super organised. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe you've got a, a Kenwood. Oh, oh that's right. In I a galley to have a mixer. Well, I thought it was a mixer. Okay. Thanks. Not so have a look at the loo. Oh, lovely. So, just really, I wanted to point out this door. This is a fire exit as well as. Oh, no, yeah. Come and find one of us. Can I help? What's the cost? Yes. If the weather is suitable. They're very stable and very easy to paddle along. And Cleo loves kayaking, so if you want to go with just him, I'm more than happy to take anyone out. Really. He's, okay. He's a good fellow. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you will get a wet backside and wet sleeve. They're incredibly stable, so. The primary one is the port side gate. It also doubles as my bedroom at night in here. So you're welcome in here at any time during the day. Obviously I'd like a bit of privacy at night. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So, a loose plan um, is to head for Tobermory tonight, up through the Sound of Mull, and then tomorrow to the Isle of Col. And we'll overnight there and then out to Mingalay, which is at the southern end of the outer isle. And that's as far as I'm planning at the moment for the next couple of days. So just keep a, a good look on the forecast. How long should it take to travel more? About two and a half hours. Alright. Thank you. On the way Shear Waters, showing why they got their name, searching for food, and a big job out here. Everyone's on the lookout. Perhaps, just maybe, the birds are heading for something rather special. Flat calm would be much better, but this is as good as you can hope for. The dorsal and tail fin of a basking shark, sieving tiny plankton. That's all we'll spot from the boat on this quite expensive trip. All you get to see are small bits of this great fish. On an African safari, you'd feel cheated if you only saw 10% of a lion. But usually this is it. But Peter the guide is pleased and so is everyone else on board. We're now arriving at Tobermory on the big island of Mull, having come across from the Oban Marina. Well, so far so good, with no surprises, yet. That's great, thank you, we'll see you in a few minutes. Out. There's all sorts of marine traffic coming to Tobermory on Mull. That orange boat is a hint of what is to come, certainly a surprise. <laughs> Noisy anchor chain. Theo does this often and uses ear protectors. It's nice when it stops. Time for a welcoming drink all round on this floating hotel, if you can call it that. <laughs> now the lady in red is from Hong Kong and then there is the question of supply, demand and cost. 
sides will be drunk? Um, I'm Each. not entirely sure. You're not, not entirely sure. I'm afraid not. There is like a well, number. That's all right. Then. There, is, that's there is a number somewhere, and I think we've just got a limited amount, and when that runs when out, it's gone. It's gone. We go to the shop. Yeah, so after So after Wednesday, we're in trouble. The next question is: After Tobermory, is there anywhere we can head? So he's multi talented as well, Mr. Cup. Thank you. He used to be a silver service waiter many years In the military. Appropriately, seafood, salmon, and prawns. Now, where in the food chain? And some of our demands are controversial, as we'll see. And how will the menu vary over 10 days? More eggs on the case. Well, not very adventurous so far, but when this comes into use, things can get a bit tricky. Tobermora Harbour is calm and a good place to learn the routine on a rubber dinghy. The Flying Dutchman may remind Yvette of her connections, also Belgian and French, with a special skill as it turns out. Mull Aquarium is unusual in that it looks after creatures and returns them to the sea. Rescue and return, as they say. That's good for the marine life and good for the visitors, be they locals or from further away. They wouldn't normally get face to face with a squat lobster with its neat way of cleaning the back of its shell. Today, the volunteers could be extra busy because the natural assets of Mull will be on offer. Welcoming a huge influx, not only to the aquarium, but to its special wildlife around the island. Puffins, sea eagles, otters are the main attractions and bring tourist income, though only mainly in the spring and summer. Those from St Hilda will be joined today by the mass invasion from a cruise ship a very different experience than the St Hilda to St Kilda, now on day two. This overlap between the traditional fishing and modern tourism in its various forms and sizes is a bit of a dilemma for Tobermory and the island of Mull. Remember that orange boat when we arrived? Well, this is what it's all about a cruise ship that can deposit thousands of guests on a small town for a day. Over-tourism is the word being used these days. Classic examples are Barcelona, the Provnik, and especially Venice, which the locals say has been wrecked, spoiling the very place people come to see, where millions of selfies are taken year round. For those passengers, now it's back to those amazing amenities and on to another port where this kind of impact may or may not matter, may or may not be welcomed. We started off this morning just here in Tobermory Harbour and headed out over the north side of Mull, past Bloody Bay and Ardmore Point. Headed up around the point of Arthur Murphy. and we're now in open water. On our comparatively modest vessel, we'll visit islands that huge ships cannot reach and won't want to, fortunately. No shops. Time for a wildlife count in the lounge or saloon, not bar, though it might just affect the accuracy of the data, perish the thought. Yes, it says that actually these are the light blue flowers of the hair bell. Mm -hmm. Now for some bad news and some good. So he's, he's fine. Oh, right. They're both fine and they have to find each other. Right. Okay. So that's right. the next step. Right. Two of the group have gone astray. Really the bad weather isn't helping here on the island of Canna with its one shop, tiny resident population and owned by the National Trust for Scotland. As expected, it's Leo to the rescue of the two separated men, somewhere out there in the gale, which is fairly typical for this part of the world. Do you want 
weather. More eggs, much more than a chef. Don't skimp on waterproofs. What's happening? The problem is, we've got wildlife Peter and guy Peter. No, wildlife Peter and guest Peter. So we've seen guest Peter, he was the one we were worried about, and we've seen wildlife Peter, but they haven't seen each other. And we've only got radio contact with wildlife Peter, but for some reason he's not answering his radio. Because we've not met. No, they haven't met, so... Um... Wildlife Peter went wandering off looking for it. Uh -huh. And this time he was crossing the bridge. He ran past the church. That's guest Peter in the fetching blue trousers in the rain. Leo brings him back. Yes, one down, one to go. Turned out really nice at the end there. <laughs> Came out lovely and sunny, didn't it? <laughs> Did you see anything? Did you see anything? Apart from rain? No, I didn't see a lot. And another day reading about St Kilda. If the weather's anything like what's out there now, their trip and money will be in vain in the rain. Another snag, a minor one. We're trying to move on, hoping for better weather, but we can't. result is? Uh, so we just felled a krill with our anchor, we brought her up and she was uh, entangled in a bit of fishing gear but we've now cut that free and we've got the weed off and uh, now we're up and underway so we're ready to go. Fortunately the band of rain passes through as we head for what some say are amongst the most beautiful beaches in Britain if not the whole world. Welcome to Mingalay, empty except for some campers around the only habitable house used by a warden on his passing duties, which include keeping an eye on the puffin colony here, which is on a slope behind that amazing beach. Razor Bill's here too, to welcome St Hilda on its way to St Kilda, they hope. I'll be become a puffin, I think. Right. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm with you, lying down amongst the puffins. Remains of the old village, now home nearby to lots and lots of puffins, along with the beaches, a real highlight of the trip so far. St Kilda has thousands and thousands more, but this is a pretty good start. A 
vital part of their diet, sand eels. Delivered to the puffling, safe, more mostly, in the burrow. But above there are problems. Predatory gulls, now famous for their persistence. Another even more formidable interceptor is the great skewer, a determined pirate. Gulls and skewers patrol the nesting slopes of the puffins, but you have to remember they have hungry chicks to feed too. Meanwhile, the puffins circle over the beach in our boat to avoid the hassle, or if robbed, return to the sea, using up yet more energy, diving over a thousand times a day, total over seven hours underwater sometimes. We're sitting amongst puffins, as we'd hoped. The puffins leave to go fishing. The gulls head for the beach and we follow for tea. We spot a pair of oyster catchers on the way. The skewers drop in. So do the gulls from their patrolling. Charlie's found something. The seal skull was probably cleaned up by the skewers and the gulls. So it's goodbye from them and hello to some serious waves, probably. But we'll see. And so far, no big surprises. We passed the cruise ship in Mull a week ago, and we're heading for somewhere many people hope that such ships will never reach with their thousands of passengers, just as a place to tick off. The bridge club open to all, Charlie and Leo. Now this seems like a nice idea. But is it? Well, no harm done except to a plate and some soup. Plan 
B. They may have had to turn back. This is the Atlantic swell. They say if you miss St Kilda, next stop is the Statue of Liberty in New York. Though you probably realise your mistake well before then. Spot on now. Actually, it's a group of islands. An ancient volcanic crater, which has turned out to be an excellent place for seabirds and for people for a while that depended on them. The St Kilda group includes Soe, famous for its sheep, and Bororé, only recently surveyed. Very difficult access. But the fine ship of St Hilda Adventures is now arriving at the much anticipated destination of St Kilda, the main island of Herta, in fact. They approach past Dunn, separated from Herta by a narrow channel. Greeting them are the star attraction of these slopes, puffins. But it's up above that everyone's favourites are truly amazing. Not famous Scottish midges, but some say uncountable numbers of these parrots of the sea. They may be up there or in their burrows below plus bufflings, or on the sea, under it, or miles from here fishing for their chicks, waiting in their burrows. Counting burrows helps, but it can only be an estimate, say of 140,000 pairs, plus the biggest colony in Britain. At last they're here, on what can seem bleak and inhospitable, an outermost outpost so far but yet now so near setting foot on a promised hopefully island they're following the footsteps of the previous inhabitants thousands of years ago who landed on a barren shoreline how they lived here makes a fascinating story the welcoming warden helps them read about it and what happened later You got some eggs or some oh, I love yes, 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 please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like to take one and pass them around. Yeah, all the friends. Into the little shop where Charlie is keeping in touch from this rather exclusive address. Okay. These days with some modern technology. Puffins, of course, prevail. That symbol must be worth a fortune across Britain in the many places it occurs. Less of a star, perhaps, is the St Kilda Wren, a bit bigger than its mainland relative, which is where Charlie's car is being sent. Also true in the old days, when the St Kildans developed a very specialised lifestyle on some of the highest cliffs in Britain. It was centred on seabirds, these days estimated at one million. So there was no shortage if you could reach them. Anyway, it wasn't the supply that caused a poignant end to these hardy souls. Gannets and fulmers were harvested each season to be plucked, dried and stored for the next winter. Feathers and oil were kept for export and helped pay the rent. Whilst bones were shaped into implements and skins into shoes. And of course, eggs provided abundant fresh food in summer. Puffins were on the menu, some today legally in Iceland. Man meets puffling. They built cleats 
as larders or stores, and seabirds, eggs and turf were all kept in them. But it was a way of life that was starting to die. The long harsh winters and furious storms took their toll. The people could be cut off for months. The houses took a pounding, and no doubt seabird food and some fish made a tough diet, though they did grow some crops with difficulty. This is Main Street today, with the renovated Ladies' Boudoir No. 2, where John MacDonald lived. Notice that last date, 1930. Same with number four, Margaret Ferguson, 1893, and Neil Ferguson, 1930 as well. Number five, built in 1861, now overlooking a view which is changing after that final departure in 1930 of the last 36 remaining islanders on the edge of the world, bringing to an end a unique culture and way of life. But the Soe sheep remain, tough as they are, using a cleat as and when. Either in it or on it and that's where they rest or eat the grass growing on top, which is where a pair of fulmers are courting. Less lovely is their ability to eject a foul-smelling fishy liquid when required. No doubt the original St Kildans knew all about that, being on the receiving end of the fulmer's defence. The Soe ram has horns for defence and attack in his mating rituals. Fulmers breed all over St Kilda, 68,000 pairs, and have spread widely around Britain, helped in the past by the fishing industry, throwing unwanted fish away. They may look like gulls, but they are part of the petrel family, also known as tube noses, helping them to excrete salt from the seawater, which is where they go to feed, often many miles from here where there are new dangers facing them. Soe sheep have lived on Main Street and in the renovated cleats and have seen some changes recently. Could this be to the detriment of St Kilda given to the National Trust for Scotland in 1957 and a National Nature Reserve? That ram's horns seem to have paid off. Twins. So is the former's courting, but their chick may be fed plastic, not fish. Some changes are for the good, though for some it may spoil the ancient feeling. It's their moving old military buildings and there was even a puff in. Not a fire, but cleaning up a souvenir of the sheep. <laughs> well, can it get any better? Place, weather, wildlife, all good friends. Charlie knows. Beyond the main island, Herta is Borroray, with other fragments of that volcano, active about 60 million years ago. And what fragments? stacks as they're called, covered in gannets with 60,000 pairs. And who's counting? And gannets give the game away, a word that's a reminder of their prodigious appetite of both adults and chicks.
Jesus. That extra skill of Yvette has revealed itself as a catcher of mackerel too. Well, we've seen a whale or something. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. That one was screaming. Is that without your salami too? That was no salami. That was no salami. We've got salami. And we become the gannets with Morag's skill very evident. He's trying to get more fish. And the mackerel heads have gone in the lobster pot. All part of the food chain, which now includes us, and plastic as well, perhaps, as the fulmer and other fish feeders suggest. And research is going on. Here we are. Finally, I can't find you. <laughs> oh, well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's fresh out of sea. Good. good. <laughs> Fantastic. You want, mine, you want one as well. well. At least two. At least Otherwise, it's no use. So just just point two. and press. First one's always yeah. disastrous. <laughs> oh, you use that, I always use Yes, good fun. But literally, below the surface, Charlie knows about the issues, changes and risks here. Overfishing, lack of controls, need for protection. And more and more pressure to increase salmon farms with their problems of pollution, disease, lice, seals, which may be shot when we invade their traditional home. Now there's an elegant road bridge to Skye, a new less elegant factory producing food for salmon farms, fish meals made from fish. Does that make ecological sense, bearing in mind the millions of seabirds that depend on their food from the potentially very productive ocean? And we eat that salmon, possibly with plastics included. Climate change may affect fish, it may affect also tourism, with those beautiful places becoming more like the Mediterranean. Oban Marina, where it all started ten days ago. Safely back from St Kilda with St Hilda Sea Adventures. Into their own birth. All right, it may not be based in Bimini, or even legendary. Unforgettable is probably the word. Richard's all the best. See you. Thanks for the mate. All the best, folks. Lovely and sunny, didn't it? <laughs> Did you see anything? Did you see anything? 